Hey everyone, welcome back to the Stack Component Series. Now, if you have watched all the previous videos, you know that we've added a lot of functions, we've added, added a lot of features, but the main thing is as it's expanding, it's actually quite difficult for anyone else to read. Uh, so what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm gonna be just addressing all of this, showing you all the features, how we can help clean this up. I know in a previous video, I mentioned I was gonna go do comments. I'm actually gonna be doing some in this video. I'm not gonna go over every single widget and everything that we possibly have created and add descriptions, but I'm gonna show you how you can go about doing that. I'm gonna be adding some of them in this video. So you will be able to see that and then uh, in the next video, I'll have essentially like everything written down. If you are curious on like everything that I possibly comment and do pretty much, uh, you could join the Discord, ask questions, uh, more than happy to do that. Uh, I'm not gonna go over every single thing because I'm not gonna make like a three hour video of just going through commenting everything and then uh, doing all that fun stuff. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so one of the things that I want to show you first is right now we have all of our blueprints and if we go into our stat system, we'll notice that, yeah, we've added in some folders so that does organize. But one of the things is if you actually hover on top of this, uh, you just get to see the name and we can actually add a description here. So if we actually opened up our stat system, if we went into class settings, if we were to expand this little, what you can do is you can actually control the blueprints display name that's being shown uh, as well as the description. So those are the two things I'm going to kind of focus right now. You do have the ability to like add categories. So if you ever want to search for categories, you'd be able to do that. Uh, but what we'll do for here is just to show you, we're going to just change this to stat system. And then for the description, uh, let's just say, um, a uh, component that, mm, let's see, um, two, two, two. yeah, let's go with component that adds stat values to a character blueprint and manages all calculations related, uh, manage all calculations Let's get rid of this and manage all calculation and communicates with UI. Now that's just a description. And then now that we've compiled, let's go ahead and just save this here. And we'll give it a moment to do all of its thinking. And we'll go over here. Now we can hover on top and we'll see that our description shows there. Now, one thing is you'll notice that the name is still the same. So what exactly is the display name? Uh, so the display name could be either what's showing up in the world, what's available here, or as well as for a component, if we actually went into our character, if we hit add, we can then type stat system and that appears. So it no longer appears as AC stat system, it's stat system. So if we went over here and just called this Bob Marr, I was thinking of Bob Marley, I don't know why. Oh wait, let's make sure to hit compile. Bob Marr shows up here, which is in fact our stat system. Obviously not gonna change that to the name. We'll compile, leave it there. But that lets you know that you can add some descriptions to your blueprints. So remember, go to class settings and then add in display name, a description. You can also go into adding a category and you can also go into adding namespaces as well. But we're just gonna highlight on those two. Uh, I'm actually gonna delete this mage thing for cleanup purposes. Go back to our stat system, go into our save game slot. We'll go into class settings. We're gonna do the same thing. It's uh, save game slot. Or right, let's go with um, stat system save game slot. It's kind of a long name. Let's go with uh, change that to save game slot. 
Do to do, do. Save game object that stores stats from the stat system. And compile save. Close that out. And then now we'll be able to see our description there. So you can do the same thing with all of the widgets. You could literally go into every single one, go into graph, class settings, and do the exact same thing. So this is just button base. Default button base for all buttons. And then if we went into designer, oh, actually it doesn't appear here. Button base. Oh, because I don't think you can add it to your own thing. Sorry, let's go into this. Button base shows up there. So like that, you can rename it so you're not seeing the CUI pop up or the WBP appear. You'll be able to just see the name. Makes it a lot cleaner and easier. You don't have to see those everywhere. So just remember you go into there. Display name, description. Very important stuff for that. Next thing is I want to show you for the same thing with our functions. So if we were to go to our attribute check, we'll notice here. And then from here, we actually get to enter in a description. So our attribute check function is, let's see, it basically allows the ability to check through all of the maps. So a nice description could be, let's see, do, do, do. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see, checks the at attribute type. Mm. We could just say like searches for a specific attribute and returns a float variable of the value. So we'll also be able to do that. And then if we were to ever do an attribute check, you can actually hover on top of it. Or if you did attribute check, you can hover on top of it. And it says it searches for a specific attribute and returns a float variable of the value. So like that, we'd be able to easily do that. And then we can also do this where we add a comment and we'll say, let's see, this function to do, do checks which map, which attribute type map to use, pulls the float variable from the to, to do correct map. You can give it whatever direction you want. This allows us so that as the developer, when we're opening up the function, we'll be able to see what exactly this is doing. You can even break this down further as in you're like, okay, so we're switching between a list of attributes and then we're selecting the specific map that relates to whatever we're using based on that enum. So if you were ever to go around, you'd be able to be like, okay, that's what this does, and then go through. And we can do the same thing for this. We could even go with doing that, and we'll see, check which map. We can even check, see. Copy that, go in here, paste, and then, can I expand this a little? J1 and pulls the two, two. See, instead of the and, check what map to use, adds the new value to the correct attribute map. And then from here, we could even do further comments by doing this. Let's press C again. When the correct 
map is found, we'll add the value to that map. So when we show up here, it's like, okay, we're checking for the correct attribute. And then from here, we check that the map is found and then we add that value to the map. And then we return the value as well. And then we can hover on top and we'll notice there, oh, we didn't add one for the description. So the description of adding would be, let's see, do, do, do. Let's see adds value to the correct uh to the selected attribute type you can name it whatever you want so we'd be able to easily organize this so that if we ever hover on top we add value and then we could literally just copy and paste this and change it to subtracts value. I think the correct thing is of the selected attribute type. And let's close out all of these. I think we have some explanations here, but let's see. Do, do, do. I think we could probably break down these ones even further if we wanted to. If we wanted to like really organize this, we could move this down. Move this over. We could do like press comment. And then from here, we could be like search data table based upon row name level underscore. And we could go through there, then we can go here, comment again. Let's actually fix all of these. Move that over and move down. Comment there as well. And we'll do this. From this comment, we'll say to set new max XP based upon data table. Oh, we got to add and update attributes available. Yeah. Update all stats, then check if player gained more than one level. So you can add different types of descriptions. Now for this, we leveled up, so therefore uh, we should heal automatically. And then we'll check, did we in fact gain another level? And then that way we can run through all of this again. So this kind of helps keep your blueprints a lot cleaner. Uh, you'll be able to add a bunch of comments throughout here so that you can tell anybody as well as yourself what exactly is happening here. So that way, if you ever go back to here, you don't have to like look at the notes and feel like, okay, wait, what does this function do? And then open up this and then you're like, okay, what does this do? And then you open up that. And like that, you're going through all of this spiraling around and I'm clicking through all of this. And now I have opened up like seven different things, uh, all circling around to like basically the same stuff. So yeah, that's super helpful stuff. I'm gonna actually go through and I'm gonna do a lot of cleaning up on myself. Um, if anybody wants videos on me going through doing exactly that, I can absolutely post that uh, as well. But I figured just a 
little heads up on showing you how you can add in descriptions to everything would be super helpful as well as just organizing all of your blueprints is very key, especially for myself. Cause I noticed in my last video, when I was going through all the functions, it was starting to get a little difficult to remember where exactly I need to go and where exactly I want to find that information. And then, uh, the last thing I want to cover is that you can actually do the same thing for your variables. You can actually add in a description to your variables as well. Uh, so once this auto save and again, in a moment, but essentially for the variables, you could do the exact same thing. You start adding in a description. Uh, so for example, this is our data asset. Um, let's see, data asset used to set starting stats and which stats to gain per level. And then if we hover on top of here, we get the exact same description. Oop, hover on top. And then I think it's like control alt. You can hover on top of more. But essentially, that is all of the cleanup that you can do. I'm going to go through and do that. There's actually a lot of functions here as well that I want to fix. There's also a current issue because right now uh, we are setting the max health. Uh, but the current health is actually never being set as well as um, not scaling correctly. So there's a lot of things that we'll need to do with fixing those as well. Uh, but I'll be covering that in another video when I go over health bars next.